All right, this is a video for all of you who are still getting a little freaked out about uh, the question of what is the cube root of uh, root 3 minus i. I know that I was not, I just don't feel I was explaining it well enough, and I know this is still causing some problems in your heads, and I, I talked today during tutorial about discrete roots versus uh, multiple uh, versions of the same root and uh, asked people just to try to work it out for themselves but you know what I'm feeling like maybe I should just put this question to bed so that we all understand it very clearly so let's talk about it for a moment first off cube root of uh, root 3 minus i and I can write this differently remember um, I'm saying this is equal uh, let me see hold on, sorry uh, this is equal to x that's basically what I'm saying I'm looking for a number where what uh, for this the cube root of root 3 minus i and so I can write this differently and say I'm looking for uh, sorry oops that's not right this again where I have the root of 3 minus i is equal to x cubed so I've got a cubed a cubic function which means there must be must be three distinct roots must be three distinct roots so let's go look at this so we're so what we're looking for is a number that multiplied by itself three times will give me uh, root 3 minus i so where is root 3 minus i so we'll, we'll, we'll come over here and uh, notice how I've drawn this this is a little differently uh, than just a standard uh, xy graph. Now this is just a different way of looking at it where I'm no longer looking at my um, argon diagram in terms of x's and y's but really sort of like magnitudes and angles. So uh, you might notice that uh, from 0 to 90 has been divided up into three parts meaning that uh, 90 divided by 3 each of these is 30 degrees. Now this is going to work out really well for me because when we looked at this we said okay wait a minute let's look at root 3 minus i and we know that we're going down say one and then over root three which would be okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna draw this a little bigger than I have to okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna I know I'm not doing this exactly correctly but let's just say that this is this is one here and then we'll say that this is roughly uh, root root three something like that or, or even I'll say over here is root three it doesn't quite matter because I'm not as interested in looking for the xy coordinates. What I hear I am is I'm just going to say, let's pretend that this here has a magnitude, whoops, a magnitude of 2. So now why am I saying magnitude of 2? Well, that's because the magnitude, remember magnitude is the absolute value of z, z being the complex number. So this is equal to the magnitude of uh, root 3 minus i. And this is the same way as saying it is the square root of root 3 squared plus 1 squared. Always remembering that even though this is negative i, the distance is 1. Okay, the distance is 1. So I don't actually say square of i. I'm saying the square of 1. And this will be, well, root 3 squared is 3 and 1 squared is 1. So 3 plus 1 is four and the square root is going to be two so there's my absolute value and then of course I have to say well um, treating my negative one as my y and uh, sorry so I'm gonna just very quickly draw that I've got sort of a distance here of root three and the distance here is minus i or minus one so this angle this angle must be the inverse tan of what is it now now remember I am looking at this in terms of being a reference angle okay so it's the reference angle. I'm not I don't care about negatives so I'm looking for the inverse tan of 1 over root 3 y over the X and if you work that out you're gonna notice that what you're getting is 30 degrees so my my vector now remember I'm looking at this in terms of vectors my vector here is going to be I should draw this a little bit better is going to be a 
magnitude of 2. So this is 2, and it has an angle. Notice now, knowing that it's in the fourth quadrant here, uh, this is my this is equal to my reference angle here. Therefore, quadrant four quadrant four means that I'm going to use 360 minus 30, and I get 330 degrees. Or I could also say uh, minus 30 degrees. Either way, it'll work. So here I go. I got I got an angle of 30 degrees here, uh, minus 30 degrees. Or I could say I have. Uh, here and this would be considered to be 330 degrees. Now take a look at that for a second and I'm going to erase it all so that we can get a nice clean picture. So remember what do I want? I want some number we'll call this I don't know uh, complex number Z2 and this thing cubed should equal my complex number z, which in this case is equal to, like I said, 3 minus i. And we know, we know that if I have uh, an angle um, and I multiply it by another um, angle, I just simply add up those angles. A vector times a vector means I multiply, multiply my magnitudes, and I add up the angles. So what do we got? I'm going to always need uh, a certain magnitude. The magnitude since I'm multiplying three times, my magnitude must be my new magnitude. So the, the magnitude of Z2, my new uh, thing, is going to be equal to the cube root of 2. Because cube, because cube root of 2, I'm saying, sorry, cube root of 2 times cube root of 2 times cube root of 2 is equal to 2. So that's easy. Now what I'm looking for is what is my new what is my new angle? What is my new angle that I use? Well, the easiest thing to do is you take your angle and you divide it into three because I know that if I add up uh, equal amounts, then I'm going to get that. So I have two options here. I have two options that are immediately apparent. I can take, let me see, option option one. Option one, let me see. That will be uh, 330 divided by 3. There I go. I'm going to get 110, positive 110 degrees. Okay, so that means my first solution, my first solution, where is that? That's going to be 90 and 110. Um, here, I'll draw it like that. So we're just going to say here's 110 degrees. That's my first option. And it's going to be roughly, let me see, 90, uh, 100, 110. So let's just say it's roughly around I'm not drawing it amazingly, but if you look at that, here we go. I'll just draw it like this. 110 degrees. And why is that? Well, because if I add another 110 and another 110, I will get to 330. So that works out well. So my so my first option, and oh, by the way, I, sh I shouldn't be drawing this the same length, should I? It is actually only the cube root of 2. Now, I don't I'm just guessing what that is. I assume it's pretty small. Uh, so I'm going to just make it small like this. So what is this? This would be cube root 2 angle 110 degrees. That is one of my options. Okay. Next one. So um, I could also go in the opposite direction and say, okay, well, wait a minute. Uh, let's look at negative 30 divided by 3. Okay, that gives me negative 30. 10 degrees. Okay, well, let me get another color here. I'll go with, uh, let's go with a nice green. Okay, so negative 10 degrees. That, whoops, changed my color. Let's try that again. Nice. Whoa, whoa, I totally overdid it here. Negative 10 degrees. Now I got, nice, that's my next solution. It'll be root 2. Let me see. So that's going to be negative 10, probably about something like that. And there's my angle right there, and that will be root cube root of 2 angle negative 10 degrees. Okay, so what everyone is freaking out over is, well, what do we do about the third root? What is the third root? So, 
And you may remember that I gave an option here. I said, well, wait a minute. What if you took, what if you took 330, added 360 degrees, and then divide by 3? What do you get? Well, you would get 230 degrees. Does this work? Let's just change the, I'm going to change my color again. Change my color again. Uh, nice red. Perfect. There's my red. Once again, I did not do this right. Here we go. 230 degrees. So where is that? Um, let me see. This is 180. And so I'm going to have to add another 50 degrees. So 20. Probably something like that. Looks something like that. And it's going to go that. And that will be cube root two angle 230 degrees now uh, once I get that I'd have to change them back now just to make sure that we understand how to change things back um, let's take a look at this uh, just let me pick one now 200 and let's say let's say it's 230 degrees okay so let's just turn these all off let's say I have an option here of doing 230 degrees, remember it is going to be the cube root of 2 angle, which means, okay, where is, I said that was roughly down here, I'm going to make it much bigger now, sorry, we're going to pretend that this is actually a cube root of 2, this is the length of this line, and this is going to be made up into a uh, x and a y, alright, so really I'm just going to, this is going to be the real portion, and this is going to be the imaginary portion. So what I'm looking at is finding the real and the imaginary. So I can come up with what the uh, complex number is. Okay, so first off, well, wait a minute. What is this angle? I've got a reference angle here that I need to know. This is my reference angle. Well, my reference angle, I'm uh, going to be equal to 230 minus 180. So that's, that's pretty easy. That gets me uh, 50, 50 degrees, I believe. So if I want to get everything, let me see. I've got a hypotenuse of cube root of 2. So uh, let me see. Cosine of 50 is going to be equal to my real portion. Let's just call that the R over my hypotenuse, which is cube root 2. So therefore, the real is going to be equal to cube root 2. 2 times cosine 50. Now, holy cow, what what is that? Well, let's grab a calculator. Nothing else we can do about that. Let me see. So I'm going to take 2 cube root, right there, oh, 1.26 roughly, times 50 degrees cosine. And what do I get? Here we go. 0.8. 0, 0.9. Okay, so we'll say 0. Point, we'll say it's roughly equal to 0. 0.81. All right, so 0. 0.81. And I'll just put a little squeakly. That means roughly 0. 0.81. And then uh, my sine 50. Let's keep going. My sine 50 is equal to the imaginary. I'll just make a little double line there. My imaginary over cube root two. The the Opposite over hypotenuse. So this is my sine. So therefore, once again, what is my imaginary equal to? Imaginary is going to equal to cube root 2 times sine of 50. And uh, shoot, what is that equal to? I'll get out the calculator again. I'm going to get, let's start over. 2 uh, cube root times 50 sine. And then, okay, so that is 0.965. All right, no problem. Uh, 0 0.965. So I'll just I'll just shorten this and say it's let me just erase that there. I'll say 965 is 0.97. Okay, so I'm simplifying, but uh, you get the idea. Therefore, what is this thing? Now I gotta remember I'm going in the negative direction in my real actually I'm going my negative direction in both of them. So the actual complex number, my z, I guess this was z3, I'm calling I don't know which one it was, z1 or z2 or z3. I think this is Z3. 
would be equal to 0 0.81. But remember, it is negative, and then it is negative 0 0.97i. So there's uh, one of my solutions. Now, I haven't actually talked about the big problem you guys have been having, and the question is, is well, wait a minute, let's go back. You said, well, can't I get other answers? Does this work? For example, let's let's look at this for a second. Um, uh, hang on now. Let me add another layer. Uh, can I get it? Can I add another layer here? I should be able to. Hang on, guys. Let me whoop, add another layer. Whoop, okay, I'm ready to go. Because I added 360, so so you could say, well, why not? How about I'm going to put this in a, a different color now. Um, let's go with purple. Purple is the question color. Question color. Okay. If I did 330 plus 60, could 360, sorry, couldn't I? What about, what about, what about 330 plus 360 plus another 360 all divided by 3? I'll put a big question mark on that. So let's think about that. What What is that? That's going to be equal to what? Okay, 360 plus 360 plus 330 uh, divided by 3 should give you uh, 350 degrees. Okay, so where is that? Well, that's going to be, let me see, 350. It's going to be right. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we already did that one. Okay, so... That does work, right? It does work as an angle, but the vector I get is, well, it's the same. It's the same one. So it doesn't, it's not exactly a new number, right? When I make the number for this, I'll be using the exact same vector, just like I did uh, when I was doing this, right? When I was doing all this fun stuff. And if I'm going to get the same, if the vector is the same, I'm going to get the same uh, complex number when I work this out. So that's no good. Okay, so what about, let's try another one. What about, maybe you have one in mind. Um, let me try, hmm, let's pick another one. How about uh, negative 30 plus negative 360? So I'm going to go, I got my negative 30, I go another 360, and then I divide um, that by 3. What do I get? Well, that's 390. That gives me negative 130 degrees. Okay, so maybe 100 negative. Okay, what is that? Where is that? Let me see. Now, I, I think perhaps you're, mar you're starting to realize what's going to happen here. Let's just take a look at this. Negative 130. I start from 0. I'm going... Mm, oh, wait a minute. That's the exact same thing as 230 degrees in the positive direction. So this is, we, we already did this one. We got, we still got that vector. The vector is still the same. And if I add another uh, 360, um, I'm still getting the exact same vector. In fact, it looks like as far as vectors are concerned, I only have three. And when I talk about these, if you realize it, it's like the vector is going to be the same if I rotate again by another uh, 2 pi, another 360 degrees. So all of my answers must be within 360 degrees for the original roots. Because even if I add 360 degrees, for example, let's go back once again to what I was doing before. If I took this... Okay, if I took this guy and said, all right, I, I, I went around bush. There, there is my first one. There is 230 degrees. But then I, I add, let me see, I'll go um, 230 plus 360. Now, this is a real thing. There's nothing wrong with this. 300, whee, I'm going to go around and then back, boom. Okay, the vector is the same. I haven't really gotten myself a new number. Nothing has changed. So, yes, 
I can get different angles. And there is kind of something to this. We're going to talk about it later. Obviously, when you look at things like trigonometry, you realize, well, if I, I can rotate twi twice, and that is kind of something different. Uh, for example, uh, if I'm looking at rotations, here we go, rotations, and I can say, well, yes, I this angle and this angle and this angle, they're all, they're, they're, the difference is one period, for example, and this is another period here. And so, and this is, if I started zero, this would be, I don't know, maybe if this happened in two seconds, this would happen in four seconds. And then, so they must be different from each other in some sort of way. But is the number itself different? That's the question. No, this number here is the same as this number here, is the same as this number here, the same as this number here. And so I'm not actually making a new number here not a new complex number they are in a weird way another type of root but they're not a what we call a distinct root the distinct roots are the ones that i expect to find let's go back to them let's go back we actually only have three in fact i i, I invite you to try to find another one that works i only seem to be getting negative 10 110 degrees or 230. the question is is there any way to do this in a different way where I get a different, a different number? Ask yourself that. Remember, I am trying to get a different complex number. And if you can't do that, then I guess we are done. I hope this helps out. Um, if you have more questions, ask me on QQ. Happy to help you out. And uh, talk to you guys tomorrow.